Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. He is not here, Mr. Speaker. Members for Castle Central and members for Miku South, please control yourselves in the crosstalk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, members. Mr. Speaker is not here with us at the moment, but it was a pleasure to have had the member for Castries Southeast in our midst this morning, given what he had been subjected to the last couple of weeks. Mr. Speaker, I also want to reach out to the many sick and shutting who are following the debate very intently, and permit me to single out for special mention a constituent of Denry South, not Denry North, but a gentleman who for many years, Mr. Speaker, has been a guru on current events and things political in this country. And I speak of none other than Gregor Stanislaus. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for the financial year 2023-2024 as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance. Mr. Speaker, I lend my support to the estimates as the minister who leads the Department of Education and also as the minister who leads the Department of Sustainable Development and Environment. Mr. Speaker, those responsibilities I approach daily with a commitment that is rooted in my love and dedication to my country. In addition, Mr. Speaker, to my ministerial portfolios in St. Lucia, I'm also the chair of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CIDIMA. CIDIMA has a very important mandate in disaster management throughout the region. Mr. Speaker, I'm also the current chair of COTED, the Council of Trade and Economic Development, COTED Sustainable Development and Environment. All of the aforementioned positions, Mr. Speaker, and offices mean a lot to me and the people of Denry North. But Mr. Speaker, no position in public life has meant more or means more to me than having the honor of being referred to as the parliamentary representative for Denry North. Mr. Speaker, it is the people of Olio, Despin, Larissus, Lapel, Grand Ravine, Gardet, Richfort, Belmont, Grand Rivier, and Denier Rivier, Mr. Speaker, who for three consecutive general elections stood in long lines to vote and give expression to perhaps the simplest and most unambiguous tagline in local politics. Sean again. Mr. Speaker, I endured the wrath of the United Workers' Party. I endured the wrath of an uncaring government. I endured the wrath, Mr. Speaker, of a vindictive administration which had been given a mandate by the people of St. Lucia because they had promised on the eve of the last general election that they were embarking on building a new St. Lucia. A new St. Lucia. And they were right, Mr. Speaker. They attempted to build a new St. Lucia, where once you had shown yourself to be a, support, a supporter of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker, there was no place for you in the scheme of governance. So, Mr. Speaker, when I sat here moments ago and listened to the member for Schwazel, and we should never be deceived by the tone that he employs. He comes across as being soft-spoken, Mr. Speaker. But his message and his rhetoric is as lethal as some of the characters in his own organization. He chooses what to remember, Mr. Speaker. And he was quick, Mr. Speaker, to take the member for Sufre to task. And likewise, the Prime Minister for pronouncements, according to him, they had made in relation to COVID and the state of our economy. And he remembered, he remembered that, Mr. Speaker. He did not need to be jolted, Mr. Speaker. His memory was working on point. What he chose to forget, Mr. Speaker, was the treatment meted out to six of us in opposition. And today, I don't want to dwell on the past, Mr. Speaker. We have been presented with estimates that point our country in a new direction. 
But it's important, Mr. Speaker, to dwell on the past at times to put what is happening here today in context. But we are not a vindictive government. You heard him, Mr. Speaker? Exactly. I remember after the general election, the Prime Minister came into the Cabinet and he said, Mr. Speaker, forcefully, that as long as CDP continues to be a program on the books of this country, every one of the 17 constituencies will benefit and parliamentary representatives will be empowered, Mr. Speaker, to execute programs and projects in their constituency. Mr. Speaker, for five years, I sat across there. I saw the PowerPoint presentations. Ministers and parliamentary reps on the government side were boasting, Mr. Speaker, and we were just left to be bystanders in the scheme of governance. And the only thing I got from this government was when, Mr. Speaker, the member for Castries North, acting as a responsible minister of infrastructure, contacted me, Mr. Speaker, and asked that I provide the names of contractors to paint a few railings on the bridges in Denry North. Mr. Speaker, he came back to me and he said to me, man, you cannot believe the extent to which I was lynched. Yes? He said, man, you cannot believe what I was subjected to just to allow some unemployed young men in Denry North to paint a bridge. But you know what, Mr. Speaker, I promised never to throw my staff under the bus. But I have documents in my possession. And I ask, when I go to the Ministry of Education, I ask for a progress report on the rehabilitation of school plans. Naturally, Mr. Speaker, I would have an interest in what was happening in my own constituency. And I'm going through the documents, and there's a column, contractors. Mr. Speaker, I will leave it to your imagination who was recommending contractors to do work on schools That's in Denry North. It is too early to make that a document of the House. So when the member comes there and he chooses to remember pronouncements we made in relation to COVID, why doesn't he, Mr. Speaker, take the opportunity on behalf of his organization and tell us that we aid we made a mistake. It was wrong. And he has been presented with so many opportunities to denounce the wrong of the administration that he was a part of. And today, Mr. Speaker, you want to hear about a government that is not caring? A government that ensures when schools have to be rehabilitated in Shuzel, Mr. Speaker, the member for Shuzel is consulted and he recommends contractors. I don't ask or do any due diligence on the background of the contractors that he recommends. He was elected by the people of Chozel. And he should be able, Mr. Speaker, to come to this honorable house and give expression to the concerns of his constituency. And as long as he continues to be the duly elected parliamentary rep for Chozel, this Minister of Education will engage him at every opportunity to ensure that he gives representation to his constituency. Like Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister yesterday demonstrated that he is the man for the times. Yes. And that, Mr. Speaker, on the 26th of July 2021, the assessment of the people of St. Lucia, as expressed in the ballot boxes, was, Mr. Speaker, a decision that is proving to be the right one. Mr. Speaker, they emphatically rejected the member for Mikud South. Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South during his reign as Prime Minister had very little regard for the people of St. Lucia and things St. Lucia. And when he thought, Mr. Speaker, he was invincible, Mr. Speaker, the people of St. Lucia dealt with him accordingly. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education is one of my portfolio areas to which monies have been allocated. Ours is a very serious mandate in the Ministry of Education. It is a mandate that the government takes very, very seriously. And the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, has demonstrated that he too 
takes the mandate of education very seriously. Hence the allocation of more than $200 million to the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, the Department of Education has been allotted $232,677,700 to execute its programs for the new financial year. $217,219,000 forms the envelope for recurrent expenditure. And we have a capital allocation of $15,458,700. Mr. Speaker, a lot of that money will be going to emoluments, wages, and salaries for personnel, in particular teachers in the education sector. Mr. Speaker, $2 million has been allocated to the Ministry of Education to service debt to the University of the West Indies. St. Lucia is owing the University of the West Indies almost $30 million, Mr. Speaker, debt accumulated over a period of time. But we have a responsibility, Mr. Speaker. There are persons who have presided over the affairs of this country who have demonstrated no appreciation for things local and things regional. So they couldn't care about LIAT, and they treated the University of the West Indies with scant regard and scant respect. Mr. Speaker, we have given a commitment to you that we will do whatever is fiscally po um, possible, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we give UWE the financial support that it needs to continue being a flagship university in our hemisphere. Mr. Speaker, monies from the Ministry of Education will be allotted for training. We have embarked on a one university graduate per household program, Mr. Speaker. And this year, the Prime Minister has increased the allocation to ensure that we get more young St. Lucians exposed to university education. Mr. Speaker, the provision or provision of $1.1 million in the budget represents an increase in teacher material allowance, a one-time increase of $800 for primary and secondary school teachers as well as lecturers at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Mr. Speaker, I thought for more than... Mr. Speaker, <laughs> the Prime Minister is just saying to me on, as an aside um, whether I need an increase. Um, but I told him, Mr. Speaker, I'll leave it to him to decide whether he so allocates more money for that particular um, I'm ahead. But Mr. Speaker, this demonstrates our commitment to the teachers and the educators of our country. I taught for more than a decade, and I know teachers every single time they travel, particularly those who vacation in the United States, Mr. Speaker, before they are able to buy a pair of shoes or buy a dress for themselves, their suitcases, is all, their suitcases are already half packed with teaching materials to enable the students who would be interested in, the care, in their care at um, the commencement of the academic year. So this increase, Mr. Speaker, this increase in allowances for the teachers to allow them to procure materials for better lesson delivery is something that we welcome. Mr. Speaker, we have an allocation of $3.2 million for the rehabilitation of school plants. And with the $3.2 million, we are expected, Mr. Speaker, to make improvements to the learning conditions and environment in every school in the country where an intervention has to be made. Mr. Speaker, we can do with a lot more. But we understand the circumstances that our country confronts at the moment. And so, Mr. Speaker, before a dollar is spent at any school, we have already started, we have embarked on a comprehensive assessment of all school plans to ensure that the interventions that we make, Mr. Speaker, will be impactful as much as possible. Mr. Speaker, we have also incorporated in the assessment the involvement of school principals so that they can help prioritize the needs. Sometimes, Mr. Speaker, the technocrats from the Ministry of Education visit the various schools and they decide what work should be embarked on. We are saying this time around, Mr. Speaker, that we would allow the principal a greater say in what should be undertaken 
at the schools that they manage because they would naturally have a better appreciation of the challenges that they are confronted by. Mr. Speaker, Early Childhood Development and Protection, $500,000 or half a million dollars. That money will be used, Mr. Speaker, to procure equipment, furniture, and to provide general support for the many early childhood development centers that we have in our country. Early childhood, Mr. Speaker, is a very important component of the programming of the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, in the budget, we have a program known as the Sustainable School Garden Project, for which we've received or we have been allocated $50,000. Mr. Speaker, the school feeding program in St. Lucia, as we speak, accounts for almost 7,000 students at the primary and secondary levels. Mr. Speaker, free schools will receive special attention this year to get, Mr. Speaker, to establish a school garden. And the schools come from the city. We have a number of schools in the rural parts that have already embarked on their own, own school gardening projects, Mr. Speaker. They will continue to receive support from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Agriculture. But this year, we will pay particular attention to the Ave Maria Girls School, the St. Aloysius R.C. Boys School, and the Bishop Charles Gashi Primary School, formerly known as the Marsha Combined School. And Mr. Speaker, there are a few farmers in the Marsha area um, whose expertise, I'm sure, the students from the Marsha Combined School um, can, can consult if they want, Mr. Speaker, to have um, the kind of impact that we're looking for from that particular school. I will resist the temptation, Mr. Speaker, and not take the bit of the Minister for Health, who wants to mention some of the, the farmers, but it is not a common practice to call people by name in here. Mr. Speaker, work will also be done on the NSDC building. We've been allotted, Mr. Speaker, $100,000 to install AC units, alarm security cameras, do work on the ceiling, sanitize the building for molds, metal gates, railings, and the general upkeep of that particular facility. Mr. Speaker, NSDC pay, plays a critical role in the education, on the education landscape of our country. They have a heavy TVET mandate, and given what the government has postulated over time in relation to TVET education, Mr. Speaker, I believe all the support that NSDC will be receiving from the government of St. Lucia this financial year can only serve that particular institution well, Mr. Speaker, and give particularly the students of the South an opportunity to pursue programs that would make them more employable than they would be had they not been exposed to the programs of the NSDC. Mr. Speaker, in the budget we have an allocation of 1.47 million for the construction of a block for care. This particular project has commenced in the Cul-de-Sac Valley, Mr. Speaker, and the money scheme complements the Indian government working collaboratively with the ILO. A safe and modern and reliable learning environment will be provided to the students of care who will be embarking on studies and training in the hospitality sector. Mr. Speaker, the ICT integration project is also in the budget, for which $1 million, Mr. Speaker, has been um, allocated. Mr. Speaker, we will use the bulk of that money to purchase Chromebooks for incoming Form 1 students. Mr. Speaker, given, that, given the, the state of e-books in our school system, where less than 15% of the e-books distributed among our students are currently being used by teachers and students, Mr. Speaker, we took the bold and decisive decision to procure e-books. Mr. Speaker, you do not have to install programs on those e-books, Mr. Speaker. Connectivity is all you need, Mr. Speaker, with your Chromebook. And you can tap into a repository of information and content that is available online for students in St. Lucia, the OECS, and by extension, the Caribbean. But, Mr. Speaker, I will be making a, a, um, a pronouncement in greater detail on e-books versus Chromebooks um, during the policy debate. Mr. Speaker, the OECS full project is also in the budget. 
and the PEARL stands for Program for Educational Advancement and Relevant Learning. In this year's budget, Mr. Speaker, we have an allocation of $726,152. And that, Mr. Speaker, is an amount that comes out of the 10 million U.S. granted to the OECS by the Global Partnership for Education, or GPE. With that money, Mr. Speaker, we'll be addressing some of our special education needs. We will also be looking at curriculum development, curriculum revision, capacity building, and a lot more in education, Mr. Speaker, um, working with the OECS Commission um, on the pool project. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my staff at the Ministry of Education, the Permanent Secretary, the Parliamentary Secretary, the Deputy Permanent Secretary, the Deputy Chief Education Officer, Heads of Departments, DEOs, staff of the various departments, and Mr. Speaker, line workers at the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, permit me to turn my attention to the Department of Sustainable Development for which I have ministerial responsibility. The Department of Sustainable Development, Mr. Speaker, has been allotted $23,447,500. Recurrent expenditure is $22,043,100. And we have a capital allocation of $1.4 million. Mr. Speaker, most of the monies received by the Department of Sustainable Development is grant funding. The mandate, Mr. Speaker, of that particular agency has always been executed, at least during my stint as minister, by some of the most professional and competent public officers in the country. Mr. Speaker, I am extremely proud of the work that is being done by my team in the Department of Sustainable Development. Mr. Speaker, let us look at line item Global Bi Biodiversity Framework, Early Action Support for St. Lucia, for which we've received $442,000, and this is money coming from the United Nations Environment Program, otherwise known as UNEP. St. Lucia is party to the United Nations Framework Convention on Biodiversity, and we qualify for technical and financial support under the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. Mr. Speaker, the support will help align, or the support that we're getting from the UNEP and some of the other agencies with which we are collaborating, will help align St. Lucia's National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan with international standards, Mr. Speaker, and will continue to showcase St. Lucia as one of the lead countries in the Caribbean where that particular global initiative is concerned. And Mr. Speaker, I need to thank the staff, which is ably led by the Permanent Secretary and with technical officers, um, Mrs. Leo, um, Mrs. Nathaniel, and the others for the tremendous work that they're doing on this particular aspect of the mandate of the Department of Sustainable Development. Mr. Speaker, let us look at phasing out of ozone depleting substances or what is commonly known in global environment circles as the Montreal Protocol. This year, Mr. Speaker, the department has been allotted $254,000 for that particular program, and it is grant funding that is also coming from the United Nations Environment Program. Mr. Speaker, that money will be used for administrative costs to help pay salaries for individuals who are working on that particular project. There's also a very solid public education campaign, and also the staff will be required, Mr. Speaker, to develop regulatory frameworks um, and to participate in meetings overseas, thereby giving expression to that particular aspect of our programming in sustainable development. And Mr. Speaker, I must single out for special mention here a young lady by the name of Keisha Jabatis, who, Mr. Speaker, works under the supervision of the Chief Sustainable Development and Environment Officer for the fantastic work that she's been doing as it relates to our ozone program in sustainable development. Mr. Speaker, the Ayanola project, otherwise known as the Natural Resource Management of the North East Coast project in this year's budget, has been allocated $1,094,000. Again, Mr. Speaker, this is grant funding. This is money that the government of St. Lucia receives as a gift. That particular project, the Ayanola project, is winding down. It started in the year 2015 and is expected, Mr. Speaker, to come to an end in June of this year. The mandate of the project was basically restoration of degraded areas 
and Mr. Speaker, a fantastic job has been done by the team working on this project to raise awareness within communities in the demarcated project area as it relates to forest management and general management and appreciation for the natural environment. There was also a heavy training component where beekeepers, Latanier farmers, will engage, Mr. Speaker, helping them use the natural environment in a sustainable way um, to provide for themselves and their families. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, well, not lastly, but the penultimate um, line item for sustainable development that I want to mention is the integrated ecosystems management and restoration of forests on the southeast coast or what in sustainable development we call the Southeast Coast Project. Mr. Speaker, that particular project has been allocated $3.5 million, and it is a sister project to the Ironola, which dealt with the Northeast Coast Project. But this time, Mr. Speaker, the geographic demarcation of that particular intervention has shifted. The source of funding is pretty much the same. It is grant funding. This project started in 2019 and is expected to come to an end in August of 2025. And the areas of focus, Mr. Speaker, geographically would include Pralem, Angers, Vieux North, Vieux South, and the Library constituency. Mr. Speaker, the mandate is to maintain healthy in ecosystems and to sustain livelihoods by encouraging people and teaching them to use the natural resources of the environment in ways that are beneficial to them and to other species that rely on the natural environment for their own survival. Mr. Speaker, finally, for sustainable development, of course, more of which um, will be said in the policy debate, I want to draw our attention to the nationally determined contributions as a line item for which we're receiving $160,000 grant funding complements the Republic of China, Taiwan. Mr. Speaker, the nationally determined contributions, that is a term associated with climate change. Climate change is a phenomenon that affects the entire world. And it's also a phenomenon that draws on the resources and expertise of every country in order to bring climate change under control. And every country, Mr. Speaker, once you are part of the UN family, you have to embark on what is known as your own NDC or your nationally determined contributions where you basically state what measures you're taking and what you can do to help control um, the emission of greenhouse gases and how you can help ameliorate the, the, the climate change situation that confronts the world um, given the dire consequences that we have to face as small island developing states as it relates to climate change. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Permanent Secretary the Deputy Permanent Secretary, the technical and administrative staff of the Department of Sustainable Development for the work they continue to do for the department and, of course, Mr. Speaker, more specifically for the government and people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, in quick time, I want to spend what is left of my allotted time on the constituency of Denry North. Mr. Speaker, permit me at this juncture to focus on my beloved constituency, Denry North. And Mr. Speaker, to allow me to tell you and by extension this house how the $1.8 billion or the $1.8 billion budget can impact the lives of the people of the Mabuya Valley. Mr. Speaker, I am making a concerted effort to not dwell on the past, except, as I would have said earlier, to provide context to my argument. There is a massive deficit of resource allocation to the Denry North constituency. Mr. Speaker, between the years 2016 <laughs> and 2021, Denry North, like five other constituencies, was targeted and it was a deliberate policy and strategy of the United Workers Party to starve that particular constituency of state resources. Notwithstanding, the people of Denry North were paying taxes like their counterparts from other parts of the country. 
Notwithstanding the people of Denrinov had made their contributions on the banana farms of this country for decades. But because, Mr. Speaker, in the majority, on election day, they went into the various polling stations and polling divisions and voted for Sean Edward and the St. Lucia Labour Party, that was sufficient for them to have been treated the way they were treated. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am hopeful that during this term of government, a lot of the projects that were neglected in my constituency for which I never got resources or support, I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that this time around, we can attend to them and give the people the relief that they rightfully deserve. It was a deliberate strategy, Mr. Speaker, that if you had starved me of resources, my people would have turned against me. And that would have given their candidate an advantage at the, pool, at the polls. But Mr. Speaker, little do they know, and foolishly they were advised before the election, that you should go to Denry North, have people observing COVID rules, restrict their movement. But you can go into Olion because somebody told you you had always won Olion. So go into Olion because Sean Edward and the Labour Party, they're not strong in Olion. Mr. Speaker, two years later, there are some people who have never been to Olion after the hospitality that they will. <laughs> after the experience, the hospitality of the Olion people. But here I am today, Mr. Speaker. Here I am today, Mr. Speaker. I am still standing. Politically, I am still standing. And if the elections are called next week or next year, Mr. Speaker, you can rest assured that the people of Denver North will be voting short again. Mr. Speaker, let us turn our attention to Head 43, Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport. I see an allocation of $4 million for the line item recon and rehabilitation of roads. Mr. Speaker, some of the roads in Denver North need to be considered. The Mambro stretch as we know it, this stretch of road which links the Richmond Highway into Larissus. The Richmond Ring Road, the Cemetery Road into Larissus, the Cardi Belmont Road, the Copper Road, the Lower Olio Combined School Road leading to the Hobsons, Mr. Speaker. All those roads need attention. Mr. Speaker, I can well imagine what the situation would have been for the people of Denry North had I gotten some support in the five years that I was starved and I was victimized whilst being an opposition parliamentarian. Mr. Speaker, every, very few agencies attract the attention of members than the, the, the Department of Infrastructure. And Mr. Speaker, if you were in opposition the last five years, you had to watch, Mr. Speaker. You had to drive into some communities and smell the freshness of the Baba Green. You had to watch, Mr. Speaker, as the concrete trucks were just pouring concrete night and day, and you were denied a little footpath. Because an elderly, an 85-year-old comes to your office to ask for a little footpath, because you know it's not And Mr. Speaker, you were being denied resources in a country where $112 million, Mr. Speaker, was being spent on horses, Mr. Speaker. $112 million being spent on horses, Mr. Speaker, but I could not facilitate the construction of a footpath for $15,000, Mr. Speaker. But I'm not vengeful, Mr. Speaker. I'm not vengeful, Mr. Speaker. Any agency that is in my ministerial remit and has to undertake work in opposition constituencies, Mr. Speaker, I will respectfully engage the duly elected parliamentary representatives. I will not do to them what they did to me, Mr. Speaker. So if you choose to remember what is said by members on this side, do not be selective in what you cho choose to remember, or what you remember, sorry, but remember everything in its totality. Mr. Speaker, let us look at Head 42, the Ministry of Commerce. But even if you, before we go to Head 42, Mr. Speaker, I want to look at the Austin Hill Road as a line item in the budget. The Austin Hill Road has been in a state of disrepair for almost two decades now. There was a time, Mr. Speaker, when people had to patch up 
to buy cement and ready mix to make a particular corner on that road motorable so that goods vehicles and farmers who had their, 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 their plantations um, in the upper community, in order for them to have been able to traverse that road, people had to patch up to buy cement and ready mix, Mr. Speaker, just to get a bit of relief. The St. Lucia Labour Party came into government and our resources allowed us to do a section of the road that was most problematic. And the expectation was, Mr. Speaker, after the election, we would have completed the sections that were not touched. But instead, Mr. Speaker, of finishing what we started, the then Prime Minister visited Austin Hill in search of votes. And instead of appreciating what was already done, and to complement it with the resources he had at his disposal, he opted to chide me and tell me I had done a section of the road um, which was in close proximity to where my supporters lived. What kind of logic is that, Mr. Speaker? But ask him how many votes he got up there. Ask him how many votes he got up there. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? Today, I can stand here and refer to the estimates and see the Austin Hill Road as a line item. She may have more Austin, Mr. Speaker. Ça c'est un chimé qui a dans en situation co chimé a une vieille condition pour un chaita. Et Mr. Speaker, les nous tient un gouvernement dernière fois. Nous pas tenir assez l'argent pour faire whole chimé. Moi dit premier ministre et puis ministre qui tenir responsabilité pour infrastructure en temps ça that unfair and chore shimer, hein? ko moun ka ni pli difficulté pour sa mouté à mon nan, moun ka rien hadé ek moun ki ni boutique ki vous acheté commission from vente commission. Vente payant par sa mouté la quand il était venu ministre speaker. So nous fait un chore shimer hein? pour baisser moun nan soulagement. Ek nou de ka kwè dat après élection, nou de ka fini shimer. Hein? Mais les ba pèt élection, ek les flambo an twi, yo wè ki Je ne pas faire pièce projet en constituency. Et quand je suis en train de faire un chimé, je ne vais pas faire un chimé côté de la personne qui est en train de faire un chimé. Mais aujourd'hui, Mr. Speaker, je voulais dire que je suis en train de faire un chimé. Je suis en train de faire un chimé. Je garder un budget là pour me faire un chimé à Austin Hill. Un chimé à la monde de la rivière. Là, un budget là pour un item. Maintenant, là, nous avons créé, Mr. Speaker, Heads of Expenditure. Ko uni an, 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 an 4 million dollars ki ka yi fè minist infrastructure fè chime. Yo pa oblige do ki chime yo ka yi fè. Me le uni sa wak piye an line item. Sa min sa se an chime ki oblige fè. Ek se pou rezon sa amwe kontan jodi a pou wè Austin Hill Road in the estimates as a line item. Mr. Speaker, you can punish me by not allocating the resources. My response has always been in the ballot boxes. C'est là mon fort. Mr. Speaker, so today, I'm sure they're listening. Aiden will get relief. Jupi and Lilia will get relief. Martida, an elderly citizen, will get relief. The Celestine family, Monica, Brother George, Matthew, Werner, T. Pope, all of them, Mr. Speaker, will be getting relief with the Austin in Road, as would um, Kaklin, Hayden, Bebe, and everybody who lives up in that part of the Denny Rivier community. Mr. Speaker, I told my people on the eve of elections that once the St. Lucia Labour Party had won the election, that their road would have been fixed. I told my people that notwithstanding I was starved of resources, they know my track record better than any. When I am in government with the St. Lucia Labour Party, Den Renoff is a better place for it. We get our fair share of state resources, but we were denied. Don't say my thing. I have, I have, I have copyright on that. Mr. Speaker, the member is asking me to remind the house that I did not get a single bag of cement. Example, Mr. Speaker. One bag of cement. Pay your cement for the opposition. They did not allocate not a bag of cement, and on the eve of elections. Foolishly, you should see a candidate moving on SLG vehicles with engineering assistance yes. trying to disparage me and the St. Lucia Labour Party. Mr. Speaker, you are not, we're not in this because we want to excite people. Mr. Speaker, we put our names on the ballot because 
we have a vested interest in the people whom we serve. This is not about me. When people in their 80s who work, Mr. Speaker, night on and day on banana fields to ensure that the revenue for this country was substantial, and you go to deny them a road and a footpath because in that particular constituency, people voted for Sean Edward, and you believe that because you have money, and you believe because you are riding fancy vehicles, you believe because you have an accent that you're going to win election again? You believe you can do that? Never take people for granted. And that is what they did. I sat here in this parliament, Mr. Speaker, and I watched people posture on this side. They ridiculed us. They disrespected us. They had no regard for us, Mr. Speaker, because they believed they would have been in power forever. That is what they believe. Mr. Speaker, we were here, and we used to watch, Mr. Speaker, and they used to boast, Mr. Speaker. Just make fun of us, Mr. Speaker. Where are cry. they now? Oh, you just start to cry. I'm, I'm still here, Mr. Speaker, and I'll be here for a long time. Yes, yes, yes. I'm still here, Mr. Speaker, and I will be here for a long time. And I'm not the one sending myself to the parliament, you know. Go to Olion, ask Cashton and Oliver if I'll be here next election. Go to Granovin, ask Disha and Chen if I'll be here next election. These are the people who are going to ask. Yes, Disha. No, I don't know about him. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <laughs> permit me to turn my attention to Head 42, Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives, and Consumer Affairs. It's not often that I reference this particular agency for anything in my constituency. But today, <laughs> but today I must, Mr. Speaker. And I notice the member for Sufre, Minister for Commerce, is already waving at me as if to suggest that there isn't much. But knowing her, Mr. Speaker, the little that there is in the Ministry of Commerce on the line item micro, small, and medium sized enterprises, to which 8.3 has been 8.3 million has been allocated, Mr. Speaker. I am sure that for startup and for small companies in the valley to diversify their businesses, they will receive support from the Ministry of Commerce. Mr. Speaker, there was a time when Denry North was over reliant on the banana dollar. But given the challenges of that particular industry, we've had to diversify. A lot of persons have migrated, and remittances contribute immensely now, or significantly, to the dollar circulation in the constituency. We are encouraging people to start small businesses, and those who are already in business, Mr. Speaker, we have promised to work with the Ministry of Commerce to ensure they get the support that they need in order to make their businesses thrive a little better than what they are experiencing at the moment. Mr. Speaker, I want to move to Head 46, the Ministry of Tourism, Info Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Community Tourism. This particular program in the Ministry of Tourism receives $5 million. Mr. Speaker, the Denry North constituency is beginning to harness its tourism potential. A number of young persons in the community have expressed a desire to develop some tourism products in the constituency that would cause them, Mr. Speaker, to provide for themselves and to generate employment for young people within that particular constituency. I know there's talk, Mr. Speaker, of some individuals wanting to set up an ATV program. I have referred them to the Ministry of Tourism and the feedback that I have received thus far is um, particularly encouraging, and I'm hoping that, Mr. Speaker, this can, can bear fruit, and then Renov will begin to make its contribution to the tourism product, and more specifically, Mr. Speaker, generating employment for young people in the constituency who otherwise <coughs> find it difficult um, to land a job or employment. Mr. Speaker, Head 54, Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Rehabilitation of sports facilities, $2.3 million. Mr. Speaker, one of the most, one of the most, Mr. Speaker, heavily invested communities in St. Lucia for sports development during our reign was the Mabuya Valley. We were able, Mr. Speaker, to acquire adjacent lands at La Resource to expand the playing field and get it up to FIFA standards. 
We were able to install lights. We had a brand new surface, Mr. Speaker. We constructed a, a, a pavilion and we installed toilets. Mr. Speaker, true to, true to form, the United Workers Party came into office and they did absolutely no maintenance work on the Larissa's playing field, just to punish Sean Edward. No maintenance. We had a volleyball program where the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports engaged nationally and regionally acclaimed coach Dennis Sinclair. That was stopped simply because I was an opposition parliamentarian and the program was happening in my constituency. Ricardo Bo introduced a tennis program that was unceremoniously dumped. We had a netball program for young children of the Mabuya Valley that was stopped because the, pe the parents voted in the majority for Sean Edward. We had a, a, a cricket program where Alton Crafton would drive from Grosdale on a Saturday afternoon to complement the efforts of Clivers Jules, a local coach and other coaches, because on election day, Sean Edward got more votes than the candidate of the UWP. That program was stopped. So they stopped the, 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 the netball, they stopped the cricket, they stopped the volleyball, they stopped the tennis, and they did absolutely no maintenance work on the Larissa's playing field because the people of Denry North voted for Sean Edward and the Central Labour Party. So when you see the member for Schwazel comes here, Mr. Speaker, and Saltibus, and whatever else you want, Mr. Speaker, comes here, and he, he, he wants to, 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 to pontificate and he wants to give advice, and he wants to give the impression that during their reign, and I said, Mrs. Speaker, I don't want to dwell on the past, but sometimes you have to, in order to put into context what is happening here today. That's so when you come here and you shamelessly say some of the things that you say, we have to pull you back on track, because you sat here in the parliament, you supported all what went on, you were in the cabinet, you supported it, you did nothing, you said nothing, but today you want to summon the courage to come here and give us advice. Well, you have a right. You can stand now and on a point of order and tell me that you did not support it. Put it on the record and tell me you never supported it. That's not your business. You lose. You've lost. You've lost. You've been victim. You, Mr. Speaker, today, I have assured my people that we will rehabilitate the Larry Sus playing field. And I'm not waiting on resources only from the Ministry of Sports. I am committed to using some of my CDP allocation to restore the Larissus playing field to what it used to be. Yes. Mr. Speaker, still on the head 54 spots. Mr. Speaker, the Grand Ravine playing field has been earmarked for lights. Again, Mr. Speaker, we want to work collaboratively with the Ministry of Sports and National Lodges Authority and some of my CDP allocation to ensure that lights are erected on the Grand Ravine playing field. The poles have been ordered and they are already on island. We have priced the fixtures and we have costings, Mr. Speaker, a bill of quantities. But it is not enough to just install lights. We have also purchased through the CDP a 40-foot container that will be retrofitted into a small pavilion with toilet and storage facilities for the young people of Grand Ravine. I'm not waiting, Mr. Speaker, on the Ministry of Sports to do it all for me. I am using some of my CDP allocations. As we speak, we have procured for the young people of Denrinov approximately 100 pairs of football boots. And the football boots are in customs waiting to be cleared, Mr. Speaker, because we understand that there is a social benefit in sport that you cannot put a dollar value on. I know in the aftermath of COVID, it has taken us a while to restore football in the valley. But you can rest assured, Mr. Speaker, that post-budget, the Mabuya Valley will rise again in the sport of football. And we will begin to draw the crowds again like nobody else can in this country. And our team will be competing nationally. And you will once again see a proliferation of young players coming from the Mabuya Valley, um, gaining their, 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 their getting selection on the national team. Mr. Speaker, permit me to turn to Head 41, the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development. Banana Management Unit, $1 million. 
Mr. Speaker, FIG is still important in the Renoff. Mr. Speaker, là, il y a un million de dollars en budget, en budget, là, pour garder à bord des affaires FIG. Moi, il y a des ici, les mots de l'autre side opposition, avec le mot gouvernement. Pièce de marche, pièce de gouvernement, qu'à point, pour bail pharma FIG, si pour moi, qu'à ici, pour t'y, comme un parlement pour des Renoff. Because moi, qu'on prend contribution FIG, j'ai fait pour le développement du pays, ça. I've understood the contribution of bananas to the development of our country. Member for Denry North, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we did not promise the farmers of this country that we had market in France. We did not promise or say to the farmers on the eve of elections that we had documents and we had met with farmer organization in Martinique and that there was a guaranteed market for our bananas. Mr. Speaker, and I stood here uh, on a previous Minister of Agriculture, and I said to him he needed to level with the farmers. If it is, the, if it is that you tried to secure a market, that is commendable. But you have an equal responsibility to come back and say to the farmers, I tried something, but it did not work. But you know what? Farmers who had left the industry, abandoned their fields, go overseas in search of employment, heard that St. Lucia had just gotten a new market for bananas in France, left their employment overseas, and they came back in droves, clearing land, capital de fig. Yeah. And when the bananas were good for harvest, GBD got money at because they were in market. That is what they did to the farmers of this country. And they paid the ultimate price at the pools, Mr. Speaker. They paid the ultimate price. And you know, have thought that in hindsight, Mr. Speaker, or, or, or on reflection, they would have learned their lessons. But they come here and the posture is still the same. I heard a member of the record <coughs> talking about we lost um, the, 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 the market in, in the UK. We tried. We leveled with the farmers. We told them bananas went up. And when it became cross, co cost prohibitive to produce bananas to the UK, we came out and we eyeballed the farmers. And we told them that this is no longer profitable we have to suspend shipment. And that is important. No D farmer, that no guy we have fig language. No come say we have fig language. But let us realize, Mr. Speaker, that he partake for science to have fig language. Let us take a little bit of money to pay for the bathroom and the other thing. No D farmer fig that. And we say we have to do that. Fig para ali language. But I was, Mr. Speaker, particularly pleased this morning. Let me turn Minister Agricole D. That semen passe, <coughs> sorry, it is a meeting at the Moon Business Trinidad. At Moon Business Trinidad, I am accord to buy 2,000 bread figs at this time. At the same Moon Sa, I am going to buy a bateau for us to put the figs in the Trinidad to vend. And what I want to say for this moment, we are going to buy a lot of figs. Pour nous abaisser Trinidad, 2000 bêtes figla, y a comment des hot set ici pour le moment. Et vous savez comment nous qui adressez ça, Mister Speaker? Nous qui abaisse Farma Matteo, nous qui abaisse Farma Guano, nous qui fouille canal by Farma, là il nécessaire pour wake Mister Speaker, that nous ni Farma qui produit plus fig, so that nous ça tap into ça en nous qui original market là. Figla pas obligé à les languiter. Mais là ni assez market nous jaoué. En vision, en Caraïbes, là, Mr. Speaker, côté Farma Savan Fig. Fig Castile acheté livre pour vraiment aller à l'école en cette ici. Fig Castile paye Light Bill à Den Renoff. Fig Castile paye Wasco à Den Renoff. Et Fig a ou chipé pour moi, j'ai un jour qu'on j'ai dit à Den Renoff. Et pièce de Mr. Speaker, Farma Fig a fait effort pour produire et puis pour un temps que nous avons créé un livre, le gouvernement nous a fait un tout si pour nous sabayo. Mr. Speaker, let us turn our attention to the Department of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. Reconstruction of Larissus Wellness Center, $500,000. Mr. Speaker, Larissus Health Center was ravaged by fire in March of 2015. All services were relocated to the Richmond Health Center. Mr. Speaker, I can recall vividly that morning when I got a phone call that the fire 
was destroying the health center. By the time I got to Larry Sous, the fire service was already there with Richmond police. There was, there was a, a representative of the Ministry of Health who had been informed, and she was there as well, Mr. Speaker. In about two hours' time, the minister responsible for health at the time, now Senate President, the Honorable Alvina Reynolds, she too was on site. And Mr. Speaker, we agonized in terms of how we would have restored the Larissa's Health Center. But luckily for us, Mr. Speaker, we will enter in a new budget cycle. And immediately, the then Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, member for Viewfort South, had in the budget of 2016 an allocation for the reinstatement of the Larissa's Health Center. Premier Minister Tapase, like Mam Parliament pour Vie for Soud, il n'y a ni un l'argent en dit dans le budget là. Pas l'argent que vous pouvez prêter, ça nous a créé l'ONU. Mais ça nous a créé un grand funding, un cadeau qui est bon pour le gouvernement Taïwan pour un GL Center. Vous savez ce qui fait, Mr. Speaker? Notwithstanding the number of 80 and 90 year olds who were descending on that facility for healthcare, you know what happened? Because I won the election, because the Saint Lucia Labour Party won the Denny North seat. Because the people of Denry North and the majority voted for me. You know what happened? That amount in the budget was removed and denied the people the health center. The same government that presided over the affairs of this country when $112 million was being spent on horses. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? Today, I can stand here again and tell you that in the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2023, 2024, the Larry Seuss Health Center is there as a line item. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? It is there as a line. It's not a case where, where you have a lump sum for the rehabilitation of wellness centers, and the minister and his team will decide which health centers they'll pay attention to, you know, Mr. Speaker. The Larry Seuss Health Center or the reinstatement of the Larry Seuss Health Center is there as a standalone, a line item for which monies have been allocated. And Mr. Speaker, we will bring an end to people having to walk to reach for or having to stand on the highway to wait for a bus to see if they can get a lift to the Mambrose Gap and then take another shuttle into Oli or Denny River or elsewhere. And the healthcare professionals have been stretched on days when a doctor is supposed to be seeing 15 and 20 people, just imagine the entire Denry Basin converging on the Rich for Health facility. But that will soon be a thing of the past. Nuka Wanji Health Center. Et là, il y a de monde, Mr. Speaker. Yo pa mele si yo ka fe ko yo hot le yo ka dia de se ba la yo ka dia. Pou mi ba yo kredi mwen, ou te la. Ou pa wanji yi, gouvernement, ou pa gouvernement ou ibrile ou pa wanji yi. Et vous pouvez expliquer pour vous dire qui peut estimer cela pour aller pour que le gouvernement nous met là, mais le gouvernement nous dit, il n'y a pas de mal avec ça. C'est parti, il y a un petit peu. Vous pouvez vous end up après l'élection. Qui est-ce que vous avez dit? Qui est-ce que vous avez raison? Qui est-ce que vous avez dit que vous avez dit que vous avez dit que vous avez dit? Et donc, M. Speaker, je me sens vindicé aujourd'hui que le Larissa's Health Center sera be réinstaté sur la distance de la Labour Party administration. M. Speaker, our government will never have all the answers to all the problems of this country at this particular point in time. But I can tell you that the Prime Minister is committed to creating a better St. Lucia. I can tell you that as a government we are committed to putting people first. And every initiative that we've embarked on in this country, Mr. Speaker, it has been people-centered. We put people first. My cabinet colleagues put people first, Mr. Speaker, and we are government of the people, working for the people. We will not our, allow ourselves to be sidetracked or to be distracted by those who want to see us fail. Our mandate came from the people of St. Lucia. My mandate came from the people of Denry North. So for those persons, Mr. Speaker, who have a difficulty with their party being in opposition, I say to them that when the programs of this administration continue to roll out, it will not be happy coming for you if you support the other party. Mr. Speaker, I believe in fairness and in equity. I believe people of any community in this country 
irrespective of whether you're from the north or the south, you should have access to state resources. The programs of government ought to be benefiting everybody. When we roll out scholarship programs in the Ministry of Education, we do not find out or try to find out which party their parents voted for. I know my own circumstances, Mr. Speaker. My mother didn't have land to mortgage to send me to university. I got a break thanks to government. And today I will do whatever is necessary to ensure that I give every child in St. Lucia an opportunity to pursue an education. And when we talk about the one university graduate per household, we talk about the first generation scholarship program, Mr. Speaker. I will take it on my own if I have to. Drive into every pocket community in this country and find the children whose parents don't have the means to send them to university. And when they come, Mr. Speaker, and we notice that they have the aptitude and they have the ability and the capabilities and they begin to doubt themselves, we sit them down and we say to them, you can do it. You have the full backing of this minister. You have the full backing of the staff of the Ministry of Education and you have the full support of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet of Ministers. There are some people, Mr. Speaker, in St. Lucian society. Their Member bread Henry, is already... Member of Henry North, you need to wrap up now. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Their bread is already buttered, but they are busy competing with children and young people who come from indigent families whose socio-economic circumstances will never allow them to see the halls of a university. They are the ones whose cause I'm going to champion, Mr. Speaker, as long as I continue to be in the Ministry of Education. I will continue to give expression to the plight and the concerns of the people of Denver North for as long as they want me to. And I will not allow myself to be distracted by the naysayers and by those who want to spell doom and gloom for our government and by extension our country. Mr. Speaker, I support the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2023-2024. And it is my sincere hope and belief that as a government, we will continue to deliver for the people of this country and make St. Lucia a better place for all citizens, young and old. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.